Hi, this is a continuation of our discussion of pneumonia and pneumonia vaccines. In video one, we highlighted the seriousness of pneumonia and its complications. So these are best avoided by getting vaccinated. We will pick up on tests the physician will order when considering pneumonia. A chest x-ray to look for inflammation in your lungs. A chest x-ray is good for diagnosing pneumonia. A sputum test. The doctor may collect a sample of sputum or phlegm, the slimy substance from deep in your lungs that is produced when you have a deep cough. The physician will send this to the lab for testing. This may help your doctor find out if bacteria are causing your pneumonia and what type of bacteria is causing your pneumonia. A CT of the chest to see how much of your lungs is affected by the pneumonia or to see if there are complications such as lung abscesses or pleural effusions. A CT shows more detail than a chest x-ray. Blood tests such as a complete blood count to see if your immune system is actively fighting an infection. A blood culture to find out whether you have bacteria infecting your bloodstream. If so, your doctor can decide how to treat the infection. Pulse oximetry. For this test, a small sensor is attached to your finger or ear. The sensor uses light to estimate how much oxygen is in your blood. Bronchoscopy. This is a procedure used to look inside the lungs and airways. If you're in the hospital and treatment with antibiotics isn't working well, your doctor may use this procedure. Your doctor passes a thin, flexible tube through your nose or mouth, down your throat and into the airways. The tube has a light and small camera that allows your doctor to see your windpipe and airways and take pictures. The doctor can see whether something is blocking your airways or whether another factor is contributing to your pneumonia. So if a vaccine can reduce the possibility of getting pneumonia, don't you think that you should take advantage of it? Of course you do. Now two vaccines help prevent pneumococcal disease. A PCV13, which again is the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, and a PPSV23, which is the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine. The PCV13 protects again against 13 strains of pneumococcal bacteria. And the PPSV23 protects against 23 strains of pneumococcal bacteria. A caveat, you shouldn't get both pneumococcal vaccines at the same time. If you need both vaccines, get the PCV13, also called the Prevnar 13, first, followed by a shot of PPSV23, also called Pneumovax 23, at another visit. The CDC recommends that all adults 65 and older should receive Prevnar 13, then one year later, Pneumovax 23. All children younger than five years old should be vaccinated. Children two years or older who are at high risk of pneumococcal infections should be vaccinated. And anyone 19 or older with high risks should also be vaccinated. Now, who should not get vaccinated? That's right, who should not get vaccinated or should wait? Anyone who has had a life-threatening allergic reaction to any component of the vaccine. Anyone who has a severe allergy to any component or part of a pneumococcal vaccine. Anyone who is moderately or severely ill when the shot is scheduled should wait until feeling better. And pregnant women should not be vaccinated. They should wait until after their pregnancy. Now the PCV13 or the Prevnar 13 immunizations are given to all infants as a series of four injections. The first at two months of age, then at four months and six months, and 12 to 15 months. The Pneumovax 23 or the PPSV 23 immunizations are recommended as added protection against pneumococcal disease 
in kids 2 to 18 years old who have certain chronic health conditions. The complications and seriousness of pneumonia should be dealt with vaccinations. Again, it's only pneumococcus that the vaccines address. Well, I hope this helps. Have a good day.